It's my housemate Millie's birthday today, and with a little help from Marcella Hazan's The Essentials of Classic Italian Cooking, I'm making her a cake. Well, actually, it's more of a, a not cake. It's a dessert. It's a dessert that has cake in it, but but then the cake is store-bought. Marcella does have cakes in the book, but it just none of them are chocolate. Okay, look, today we're making a chocolate dessert with rum and coffee. Diplomatico. And here it is. See, I'm not skilled in the kitchen, but I was enthusiastic about this recipe because she says, is there any other dessert like Diplomatico, I wonder, that rewards such little effort with such gratifying results. Now that being said, it does still take two days to make. So to see how we got to this point, I'm gonna have to send you back to yesterday. Welcome to the day before. So Marcella gives us two options for what to make our not cake in. The first is a 22 centimeter rectangular cake tin, or if we'd prefer it to be more tall than wide, we can make it in a loaf tin. Now, I reckon that's gonna look pretty striking, but she doesn't actually give the specifications on how big this loaf tin should be. So I popped down to my local hospitality shop and bought this. I've got no clue if this is the right size, but we're gonna make this work. So the idea is to line this with Madeira cake that's been soaked in rum and coffee. I've never heard of Madeira cake, but the local supermarket had it. She wants us to use 450 grams, which is one of these cakes. Just to hedge my bets, I bought two. Mmm, that's nice. It's a little bit lemony. Soft and fluffy with a hint of citrus. Is it meant to have citrus? Have I messed up? It tastes nice, but does it go with rum, coffee, and chocolate? Well, I don't have time to get anything else now. I'm gonna have to hope it works. So to make our rum and coffee soak, first we need five tablespoons of water. Next, five teaspoons of caster sugar. Five teaspoons of rum. Now she doesn't say anything about what kind of rum it should be. I went looking for Italian rum. I don't even know if that's a thing. Couldn't find any. And then I saw this and thought, well, it's got the name of the recipe on it. And lastly, 300 mils of strong espresso coffee. Now is that like 300 mils of espresso shots? That'd be like 10 shots of coffee. Or does she just mean like a strong long black? Uh, I think I'm gonna go with a strong long black. Yeah, it's 300 mils containing two espresso shots. Yeah, it's, it's strongish. Okay, that's our rum and coffee soak. And we have to line our tin with cheesecloth and enough to be able to cover the cake as well. Never used cheesecloth. It's pretty thin. Am I only supposed to use one layer of this? All this is meant to do is make it easy to remove the cake afterwards. I don't trust it. I'm gonna do two layers. I mean, that can't hurt, can it? Oh, shit. It's gonna get on there anyway. If I line it like that, then that's just enough on the sides and then that can kind of sit over the top. So now we moisten it with water. Did that shrink? Oh no, it, it was folded. Now we cut this into six millimeter slices to line the pan and we can use any off cuts to fill in the gaps. Now are we slicing that way or? Well, to cover the bottom, slicing that way makes a lot of sense. Unless, oh, the third dimension. Shit, she doesn't say. Well, it's gonna be covered by icing anyway. Now we dip it into our soak, but quick enough that it doesn't fall apart when we put it in. Ugh, oh, okay, no, just. I'm gonna cut the other way because that's gonna make more manageable pieces. Soak and place. Oh, this is, this is falling apart. Okay, I've got an idea. Maybe we can paint the soak onto the cake. Okay, see that's working. Oh. This is gonna hurt the pieces aren't even stained together before they go in. Hey, this is getting silly. I think we're gonna have to go thicker slices. And that is why we have the second cake. Got a little bit of patchwork to do in the corner there. Take some of these crumbs, re cakeify them and squeeze them in the corners. This is our Oh, that's our cake line tin. I'm very doubtful of its structural integrity, but hopefully the filling will keep everything up. I really hope this isn't a disaster. Okay, we're looking a little cleaner. I think I've earned myself some of this coffee soak. It's like a little cakey cocktail. Okay, next we have to separate four eggs. Oh, it's split. That's as separated as that one's getting. I have seen some people do this with their hands. Yeah, let's get that a little bit off and... Okay, cool, learned a thing. Now we add a teaspoon of sugar and we're gonna beat until they turn a pale yellow. 
Why have you? It's a dodgy socket. Mate. Okay, and that's a pale yellow. Okay, so now we're making a double boiler and we've got to measure out 170 grams of semi-sweet chocolate. Google just told me that semi-sweet was dark chocolate, so if not sweet, yeah, it's 178. 175. And we break it up into chunks. That has been thoroughly chunked. And now that the water's at a gentle simmer, we'll pop it on and give it a melt. Uh, it's slowly coming along. See, I've done this once before, a long time ago, and I remember that the chocolate ended up splitting and it was a disaster. So I'm being very cautious with this heat, but it's coming along. Okay, that about does it. Now that the chocolate's melted, we're gonna pour a little at a time into the egg yolks. Ah, hand crap. This is getting real thick. I'm honestly scared that something's gonna happen to the chocolate as it cools down, so I'm just gonna switch to mixing it. Hey, this has just sort of formed into a, well, I don't want to say what it looks like. Okay, I've washed the whisk and now we're whipping our egg whites until they form stiff peaks. It's not in the recipe, but I see all the YouTubers doing this. It's just a little bit of cream of tartar, so that way the stiff peaks will remain stiff and peaky. Oh, oh. Uh, this is fine. Well, I'd say that's looking pretty stiff. What's the test? Now we mix about one tablespoon's worth in. Don't know how, this is just, it's a solid blob. I know I'm supposed to be folding this, but I feel like I need to at least have a liquid to work with. Yeah, I think I'm abandoning any folding. Yeah, this looks like a mess. There's no way that this is right. Okay, this is a bit of a do or die moment. I might be about to ruin it. Let's just see what happens. Oh, oh, okay, this might be working. It's actually looking a bit like a mousse. Look at that. Look, it's a bit on the dense side, but I think I might have saved it. Tastes nice. It's got a quite a silky texture. So we're now gonna spoon the mixture into our cake shell. Down you go. Oh, this doesn't seem like there's anywhere near enough. Okay. I mean, I've got more chocolate, but that's for the icing. Look, I can always go out and get more chocolate tomorrow. I think I'm gonna make another batch of the filling. Separate eggs. Teaspoon of sugar. Whip them up. Ah, uh, chunks. Double boiler. Add the chocolate, but this time I will just mix rather than whisk. Oh, it's still formed that big blob again. Stiff peaks. Still again, no clue how to fold it into something that solid, so. Now at least we can fill our cake. Top and cover with more slices of cake soaked in rum and coffee. That cake that I wrapped into a ball and put in the fridge, soaked in the coffee and rum that I threw away. Okay. Okay, what pieces do I have? Well look, it's the bottom of the cake. It doesn't need to look pretty. Water, coffee, sugar, rum. We can make this work. We can do this. And we'll take our other bits and just sort of reconstitute a layer of cake. Fuse it all together with liquid goodness. See, I can make cake out of bits of cake. Pep talk got weird. My God, I think we've done it. We've got dinner reservations in an hour. Oh, I look like a mess. This is, is there any other dessert I wonder that rewards such little effort with such gratifying results? Little effort. Okay, okay, Marcella, okay. So now we cover up with our cheesecloth. That is going in the fridge and I'll see you with present day Alex. <sighs> Look at all this mess. So folks, that's how we got here. Now I'm honestly terrified to unmold this. So first we're gonna prep our icing. Now Marcella gives us two different options for topping this. We can either use chocolate or whipped cream. Now the pictures that I've seen online look honestly striking with the whipped cream. However, this is Millie's birthday and I know she's gonna prefer chocolate. So we're gonna ice with chocolate and then just to be a little fancy, we're gonna put some whipped cream on top. So we're back at it with the double boiler and 115 grams of that same semi-sweet chocolate. Break it into chunks and along with that we add in one teaspoon of butter. I am worried we're not gonna have quite enough. I think the cakes ended up a bit bigger than what was intended. You know what, I can, I can always have leftover icing. I'm gonna double the recipe. And, uh, sure. 
Now we mix in one tablespoon of cream. Oh, that thickened that right up. And I can't really put it off any longer. It's time to unmold this. Oh, okay, it's gonna come out easily. So will it keep its shape? Okay, three, two, one. Oh, it's falling off the side. Sneak your way back on. Okay, well, it's in one shape. That's a win. It's feeling very moist. Maybe we can sort of tidy up the edges a bit. Now we'll get this icing on. Oh, it's gonna rip. Oh, don't you dare. Yeah, that's not working. Okay, I've got to get this icing thinner. How to thin chocolate icing. A couple of websites are saying just add more milk or cream. We've got cream. Oh, this better work. So that is thinning it out a bit. I forgot to double the cream. I doubled the rest of the recipe and I forgot to double the cream. <laughs> Let's try this again. One just stay on there. I am running out of icing. Well, I've run out of icing. That is, look, it might taste good, but that does not look good. That does not look like the photos. That does not look good. I said I wasn't skilled. Millie's having a few work friends over in a couple of hours and all I can do is soldier on, really. The plan was to whip up some cream and put it on top as well. Maybe that can do some patchwork, cover some of the bad bits. Look, I'm just glad Millie's got a sense of humor. 250 mils of cream. Teaspoon of caster sugar. So it turns out Millie has this little piping bag. I also have some berries to put on top. I have to get creative while under the pump. I suppose I could do lines of cream and then just put the berries alternating between that. Ugh, not quite even. Okay, well that's starting to look a little respectable if you don't look at the sides. Maybe just a few more berries. Well look, this has not been a roaring success, but this is our Diplomatico. There was an icing related disaster. It's okay, really beautiful. I like the piping. <laughs> it reminds me of my um, grandma's chocolate rum cakes. I'm gonna pop this into the fridge, pull it out when the guests are over. This actually looks really good though. I love it. It said with a hint of lemon. It doesn't taste like lemon, it just it tastes, tastes like, like goodness. Is this whether you're being called a cake? It's too smooth to be a cake. I'd call it a mousse. Well, that's not a cake. It's a coos. Or a make. No, it's a coos. <laughs> <laughs> it's leftover cake day. How do you reckon it ended up turning out? It's so good. That booziness. I think it has just hit just the right amount of booziness. It's not a rum cake. It's a mousse cake, essentially. Oh, but, gorgeous. Mm. The mousse is amazing. I love mousse, and this is just so creamy. It's pretty dense. I had some issues with getting this fluffy. It's almost like a chocolate ganache. Mm. Yeah. Well, I think we're going to be eating this for a few days, and we've got some cleaning up to do. It's very mm. rich, but every bite is worth it. Thanks for joining. <laughs>